Hubbard. Underneath the hood of our 1967 Lincoln Continental four-door convertible. The car is basically an all-original car. It's had one repaint that we can tell in its life. The undercarriage, the engine compartment, all the components, the interior uh, are all original and all in great condition uh, for the year. Uh, but let's address the uh, engine compartment right now. It's a 462 cubic inch uh, V8 motor that Ford used exclusively, I guess, in the uh, Lincolns. It does have four barrel carburetor on it. It has power steering. It has power brakes. It has the original air conditioning system that it was born with. All new hoses and lines from what I can see on the air conditioning system. There are no leaks whatsoever evident on the top part of the engine, valve pan covers around the exhaust manifolds or anything. It's a new solenoid right here, new battery in the right front, clutch fan, uh, radiator reservoir. Everything is original under this hood. It's, it's a really nice, great condition, 1967 uh, engine compartment for a, for a Lincoln Continental convertible. The inner fender panels are just as nice and clean as they were when they were new in 1967. Original radiator still intact with the original shrouding. I don't see anything that's been disrupted in this engine compartment at all from when the car was new. Hi, you're at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today our guest on the floor is a 1967 Lincoln Continental four-door convertible. In a great color combination. White interior, red car white convertible top which the guys put down usually we do the presentation with the top up but this time we wanted to show you the interior a little bit better on this car so you know what you're getting uh, the top is absolutely brand new Devin has pictures of the top still pictures of it uh, that you can see the top is absolutely is as new condition so not that this car is big or not that it's a larger car than I'm used to doing because it's usually Camaros and Mustangs and Cudas and things but for the sake of discussion, we'll start this presentation out in the northeast geographic region of this car. So we'll start over here. Paint on a car is really, really nice. Uh, it, it's uh, far above a, a average driver quality paint job. The paint job is absolutely gorgeous on this car. Fenders, all the panels are really nice and smooth. The fitment of the hood, which does fit the whole way around the uh, uh, Cowl area and the tops of the front fenders and the front fascia is just as smooth as nice as could possibly be. About an eighth inch gap the whole way around it. Lincoln moniker in the front with no pits whatsoever on it. Absolutely none. Lincoln name across the front. Uh, the chrome on this car is the original chrome that it came with. Basils around the lights, the grill itself, everything on the car in the front is as nice as could possibly be. I don't see anything out of place. There's no marks, no chips. Um, all the, uh, there's lots of chrome on this car everywhere. Little tiny accentual pieces everywhere, like the base of the uh, header panel has a piece that goes the whole way around before the grill starts. That's perfect. There's no marks whatsoever on it. The grill itself is unmarked, unscathed in any way. Again, original front bumper, a little baby shot here. Somebody must have uh, kicked up a stone at some point of its life and shot it. It isn't a bumper dent, it's more of a stone ch that came back and hit it. Uh, front parking light assemblies, nice and crystal clear lenses on them. Bumper alignment couldn't possibly be any better. It's really, really a nicely aligned bumper on this car, uh, both sides. Yeah, there's no way you'd get that bumper to fit any better than it does. Really a great front end of this car. The, the hood, as large as it is, just fits absolutely gorgeous in, in between the fenders. And you can see this is all one big, huge um, body piece that goes the whole way around the top of the, uh, the car in the front. The hood fits in the center of it, and the cowl area then is in behind it. It's gorgeous fitment on the front end of this car. There's absolutely nothing absolutely nothing out of the place. Let's try the uh, northwest region and we'll see what we can find there for you. Okay, um, we're going to start at the uh, northern part of this car. We'll call it Maine and hopefully we'll end up then in Florida by the end of it. Uh, the side of the uh, 
driver's side, front fender, and again the fitment, the uh, bumper fitment is just absolutely beautiful. The chrome, chrome piece, the uh, accentuates the top of the fender, could not be any nicer. The fender lip molding, no dents or no marks or anything on it, absolutely none. Absolute zero on it. Goes down and meets the uh, stainless rocker panel. You can see the uh, fitment of the doors to the front fender is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Hood to the cowl area, to the top of the fender, to the door, there's absolutely no deviation whatsoever. It's as nice as you could possibly ever hope to find anything that would fit, especially something of this size. Uh, arms and blades correct, the brush uh, stainless uh, blades that were originally uh, released with this car. Trim around the uh, base of the uh, windshield and the whole amp around. There's no marks whatsoever. Tinted windshield, no marks on the window at all, in the window glass at all. There's nothing whatsoever. Dashboard where it transitions to the base of the windshield. Absolutely as new as you could possibly ever hope for it to be. There's no dirt, no uh, de uh, deterioration of the uh, padded dash on this car. Uh, no cracks whatsoever. Uh, no color fade actually in it either. Really looks good. A little tiny bit, and I mean a little tiny bit of patina. A couple little very slight pits on the chrome on the top of this mirror. Uh, couple on the side. Again, you, you won't even see them in the video. You won't even see them in the still pictures. A few of them there, but that's so insignificant it's not even worth mentioning. Chrome around the windows and the rubber around the windows, nice as can be. The uh, brush top of this uh, stainless molding that goes the entire length of this car is all just as nice as can be. Chrome around the windows themselves, really, really nice. Chrome on the door handles, it is original and it doesn't need replaced. It's really nice condition. Wow, door fitment. Wow, really nice. I think we're right in the middle of the Carolina section right now, heading toward the Florida uh, end of this car shortly here. Really a nice car. I mean, the, the body fitment, the, the rocker panel, the doors, all four doors, uh, I mean, they, they, I don't know how they're going to fit as well as they do. I mean, it's very solid that we can get uh, Roadrunners and Camaros and Chevelles to have this kind of fitment, and yet it's uh, evident on this car. Top of the uh, molding for the uh, left quarter panel. I think I just hit Florida right now, Jacksonville area. Um, again, the trim around the uh, bumper on the back part, it, it, it just, everything fits on this car the way it should. All tin. There's no, uh, no places the car has evidently uh, been fixed at all. Down the side of this driver's side is just as nice and straight as you would ever possibly find. I didn't see any marks or any deviations or any uh, dents whatsoever. Even the gas filler door has a nice fitment to it. Well, this car is really nice down the uh, driver's side. This is the first one of these I've actually ever paid any attention to. Uh, but th this car is a straight and nice of cars you'd ever find. It's very seldom that we find a Chevelle or a Camaro or a Roadrunner or any of the uh, muscle cars that have this type of fitment. and. Uh, uh, alignment to them, especially for being this long. Very nice car down the driver's side. Let's see what we got on the back. Okay, we're on the uh, southern section of our uh, Continental Convertible now. And again, y you have to be able to see this in the video. There is not a single deviation, not a mark, not a bend, not a ding, not a scratch, not a single solitary thing on this uh, rear deck, which I can't even reach halfway across, so I'm going to go back over here. But everything aligns as perfectly as you could possibly hope for it to. There's about an eighth inch gap the whole way around. Um, I can't find a single thing out of alignment on this thing. Same with this bumper that just fits as nice. <laughs> wow. 
It's huge, but everything aligns as it should. The lights are inset into the bumper itself for the uh, um, parking lights and the brake lights. Great big huge ones that fit between the bumperettes and the end of the bumper. Then you have your backup lights, one on each side. The lenses also are crystal clear on that. All the chrome on the bumper is beautiful and nice and clean. The uh, chrome trim around the uh, tail light assemblies, same way. I mean, it's just as nice as you'd ever want to find. It's original bumper on the car, original chrome bumper in front, original one in the back. Again, Lincoln uh, moniker on the back. There's absolutely nothing. I mean, I cannot tell you that there's a, a flaw in the, uh, in the paint and the finish in the fit of this car, and we've already gone <laughs> from the northern section to the southern section. Let's see what's, uh, we're going to work our way back up to Maine from this end. Okay, starting in the rear of our Continental here, again, this little piece of trim, just as nice and precise as it could possibly be, where it transitions onto the bumper. The um, trim on top of the uh, rear quarter panel, even the fitment of the, the door that opens up, this opens this way, this opens this way, and the top goes down, and then everything closes on it. So you have no good to contend with. Everything's automatic. You do it all from a driver's seat. Really works well. Fender lip again. I neglected to mention, it does have the original Lincoln hubcaps on it. And, uh, of course, the white wall tires. That goes without saying. It accentuates the uh, white interior also. Again, quarter panel to the uh, rear door. Hey, all this trim is just as nice as you could ever, ever hope for it to be. Chrome on the door handles. Front door. It's amazing. This, this car is just so large, and yet everything fits and everything aligns as it should. All of the trim around the window, wiper arms, cowl hood, door. Look at this. This is. Just amazing, just totally amazing. Of course, tinted glass all around, that goes without saying. Chrome around the uh, wing area, just as nice and sweet as could be. Chrome that goes entirely around each uh, side window. I saw them up, there's just as new as could possibly be. Okay, we're back up to the uh, northeast sector here. Tell you what, you just watched me go over this entire vehicle. Other than joking around about it, it is a Continental, so I guess there's a reason they named it that way. Devin just came up with that too, you know. It's a Continental, so we went over the whole northern hemisphere, I think, of it here. Anyway, <coughs> the, um, the door alignment, the front fenders, everything looking down the side of this car, it, it just li aligned. The alignment on this car is just as nice as you could ever hope to find on any car, let alone something this size. Uh, it, it's just amazing that they had the precision in that day to go ahead and fit something this well, this large. But they did it. The, the paint on it, I didn't come across any marks on the paint, no dents, no chips, no dings. Um, I can't tell you a single negative on this vehicle on the outside. Uh, it does have a couple shortcomings on the interior, which we're going to point out to you, but it is an original car here, except for one repaint and a new convertible top. Top does function like it should. It does go up and down. The windows go up and down as they should, obviously. Uh, we're going to go over the interior with you and the drive and an undercarriage presentation also, but we just circumnavigated this entire continent here, and um, there was nothing. There were no dents. Uh, there was no misalignment. Uh, there wasn't any issues with any of the chrome. Uh, there were no issues with any fitment whatsoever. This car is as nice a Lincoln Continental convertible as you would ever hope to find. And it's not going to be a $60,000 car or a $50,000 car. So it's actually going to be a little less than $40,000. So it's a car that definitely warrants taking a look at if you're in the market for a Continental because this is a nice one as you're ever, ever going to find. So let's see what else we can show you about it. Okay, we're here with our uh, obviously red with white top and white interior uh, Continental Convertible. 
Um, normally I do it interior uh, presentation, sitting down in it, but I want to show you what we have here as far as the interior goes with the seats. It, the entire interior of this vehicle, the door panels, the carpeting, the seats, everything is 100% original for 1967. Obviously there are a few distressed areas in the car. There are some cracks in the leather, especially on the uh, uh, driver's side of the front seat. Um, the rest of this could probably be redyed. That would have to be replaced. I think you can get away with dyeing the rest of this and the door panels. The door panels are not messed with in any way. They're just as nice and clean as could possibly be. The windows all actuate. You can see the wood grain accents on the vehicle. It's just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, door panels front and rear. We have all four doors open for you to take a look at. Um, it's as nice as you'll ever find. Power seat. Um, the steering wheel, there's no cracks in the steering wheel. The dashboard is still uh, resilient. It, um, it's a uh, padded dash. The gauge cluster is as crystal clear as you would ever hope to find it. Original sun visor is still intact and still nice. They're not uh, uh, broken or deteriorated in any way. The horn button is still resilient. Uh, the car is as nice interior-wise as you could ever hope for an original leather interior for 1967. does have that area on the passenger side of the front seat that has to be addressed. It's a fold-down armrest. Uh, we're going to sell the car as you see it. We're not going to address anything in the car any further. <coughs> That's why it's priced where it is. If you look Competitively, these cars sell done in the fifties to sixty thousand dollar range. You're not going to pay that for this car. The only thing you can do is put gas in it, drive it, and take it anywhere you want to go. If at some point of its life you want to go ahead and address the interior, that's on you. We're not going to. We're going to sell the car as it is. It's not the type of vehicle that we generally use here at Hangsters in Daytona. We try to specialize in muscle cars. Uh, 60s and early 70s. This obviously doesn't kind of fit that format. Uh, it was a kind of a car that Kevin fell in love with and had to buy and I don't blame him because the car is really outstanding. The car is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. It's definitely not a muscle car. I don't see anything else I can tell you negative about it. The chrome on the dash is as nice and clean as could possibly be. If you notice all the lights are working on the interior of the car. Um, power seat works as it should. Uh, everything on the car functions. It's a nice running car. It's available at a very competitive price here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we'll be more than happy to accommodate you on a flight coming down, uh, meet you, present the car to you, put it up on a rack, and let you see what you're, uh, you're, you're purchasing. Also, uh, uh, I'll take you for a ride in it and uh, show you what the car uh, is capable of doing. Um, Mechanically, it's as sound as you'll ever find one. It's a great car. It's here at Hangsters, a great price, and take a look at it. All right, we're going to go for a ride in our Lincoln Continental. The speedometer, I know, is trying to sneak up here. We're going to find out. There are no gauges whatsoever. This is definitely not a Chevelle. Uh, it does have climate control air. It has a Mickey Mouse radio in it. Well, actually, it's a blow plunk. Pretty good radio. Let's see the wipers. Wipers work. I know the windows all work. We put them down. Horn. Horn works. Turn signals left. You can hear it blinking. Can't see it. We're in the sun, but I can hear it blinking. So it's blinking. Gas gauge is. Gas gauge is blinking for us. It's a nice car. I'm assuming this thing's running because I can't hear it. You can't feel it run, you can't hear it run. It's like driving an electric motor run. It's down the road straight as an arrow though. Just 
straight as an arrow. Couldn't ask for a better running car. Wow, is this thing smooth? The speedometer works just like it should. It's a ribbon speedometer coming up just like it should. See, 50 mile an hour. like driving an electric motor around you can't even you can't feel it running you can't hear it run there's no exhaust sound whatsoever puts the brakes on with the no hands on the wheel car stops just as smooth as can be no hands on the wheel Jesus I can't believe this thing nice smooth car speed on and working we're up to 55 there's 60 mile an hour Really straight run a car. Nice car. Hi, we're underneath our 1967 Lincoln Continental four door convertible. Absolutely beautiful car. Absolutely stunning. We just took it for a ride, and this thing's like driving an electric motor around. You can't hear it, you can't feel it. It just goes. It's just as smooth and quiet as you could ever hope for any vehicle to run that's what this thing does not that it's a long car or anything but we're gonna start the video up front here I was clean shaved this morning so if I have a beard and a mustache by the time we get done it's probably because of the length of this car uh, disc brakes in the front tie rod ends look like they're brand spanking new on it nice big heavy sway bar on it oil filter looks to be new uh, engine doesn't have any leaks whatsoever on the oil pan Shocks are relatively new up front. Looks like the springs have been out and uh, addressed at some point too. The uh, fender wells themselves are just totally unaffected. There, there are no marks on them anywhere. Big, huge structural supports from the uh, K member uh, back to the uh, subframe structures of this car, being a unibody car. It, um, it, it shows absolutely, absolutely nowhere whatsoever from 1967. It still retains its... Uh, uh, splatter coat uh, sound deadener uh, undercoating that all the manufacturers in that era did use on the undercarriages of their vehicles. Appears to be about a two inch, I'm going to call it two inch uh, primary pipes off the cast iron exhaust manifolds that are our original to the car. All the steering gear is nice and tight. The pitman arm is nice and clean and tight yet. Steering arm itself, um, <clears throat> same deal. It's as tight and nice as could possibly be. A little tiny bit of oil leak as you can see off the rear of the motor here. Now this car has been sitting for a couple weeks. Devin and I just took it for a drive, but there's still not enough of a, a seep there for it to drip. And it's so minuscule that it's not even worth mentioning, but I am going to mention that it does have a slight oil leak in the rear of the uh, engine itself. It doesn't appear to have anything off the transmission. Uh, <clears throat> new vacuum modulator on it, the tranny cooling lines. Uh, going forward are all original. Wow, these things are really over-engineered. There's not one, but there's four actual transmission mounts on this vehicle. Park and brake assembly, still original and intact. Wow, this thing's really... <coughs> this thing's really a over-engineered piece of uh, equipment here. The floor pans, just as nice as you could possibly, possibly ask for. Original again, sound deadener undercoating on them yet. Uh, there's a jack mark right here on this subframe structure and another one to match it right here. So someone had it up on jack stands at some point of its life. It is a 1967. There's no marks on the edges where the uh, ro um, rocker panels transition onto the floor pans. And again, all the uh, floor pan substructures are really nice and solid. Drive shaft, double U joints in the front. Double U joints in the back. It's 
Jeez. Instead of one, it has two here and two there. More over engineering here. I'm halfway through this. Uh, there's absolutely nothing that's been disrupted or, or distorted uh, other than those couple little minuscule marks through the years. This car is as nice and original a car as you'll ever find underneath. Again, you can see a little tiny bit of a stain there on the bell housing area for oil seepage. Not enough to drip, but it does have somewhat of an oil uh, seepage leak there. Uh, there's nothing. Back of the transmission is dry. Tranny itself is dry. Engine is dry except for that one spot. Um, we're about halfway back. Let's see what we can find on the other half because there's certainly nothing up front. I did mention shocks are good. Discs in the front. Hardware on the disc is also looks fresher and new. Also the calipers appear to be uh, uh, newer calipers that were installed. Nice car. Really nice car. Let's see what's on the back half. Okay, second half of our uh, Continental Convertible. Again, you can see the floor pan structures themselves totally undisrupted. There's absolutely nothing. A lot of structural support in this vehicle. I mean, it is a convertible. I can understand why they need to structurally uh, uh, support it a little bit better than they would a, uh, a hardtop uh, sedan. But the rocker panel areas have additional uh, strengthening uh, uh, structure on them, both sides obviously, and through the center. Everything is structurally um, plated with uh, additional supports everywhere on this car. You can see uh, in the video here, you can see all the structural supports on this vehicle. I mean, it's got subframes, but the subframes even have uh, exterior type subframes to it, and then the, the supports for the uh, uh, floor pans. It's really, really over-engineered. Really over-engineered. Uh, the, uh, the, the pans are just beautiful on this car. I can't believe they're the original, but they are. They're, I mean, they're the original pants. Well, there's something different I've never seen before. It's a crossover pipe uh, that goes from the uh, uh, mufflers. Well, these are actually resonators. Two-inch pipes go into two-inch resonators that have a crossover pipe, like an H-pipe, and then exit out into two mufflers that you'll see shortly here uh, at the back end of this car. It has a multi-leaf rear suspension appears to be some type of a really heavy duty uh, Ford 9 inch rear end in it. Again, uh, two U-joints in the uh, back, gas tank appears to be, it is metal. It almost looked like it was uh, plastic, but it isn't. It's a huge vertical tank uh, behind the rear differential, and that is the gas tank. The uh, rear floor pan for the trunk, of course, is in the back. All four tires on this car are new. <laughs> All the bushings on it are just the way they were when they left the factory. Uh, it does have a set of real heavy-duty looking shocks in the rear. Again, the exhaust system is brand new from beginning to the very end. Two turndowns at the very end. Um, I can't see a single thing on this car, absolutely nothing. It has some type of a perimeter, um, full perimeter substructure frame that goes from the subframe in the front here of the uh, springs transitions up over the uh, rear differential and the whole way to the back and then square it off with another big subframe uh, piece across the back end. None of it's uh, disrupted in any way. No jack marks, no marks of any sort, um, no deterioration, no rust. There's not a single paint blister underneath this whole vehicle, nothing. There's absolutely no rust anywhere evident on this car, none. It's a long car, it's a big car. Uh, we just took it for a ride. This car runs exemplary. It's, it, honestly, it is like driving an electric motor around because there's no sound involved in it. You give it gas and it pulls your head off and goes just as smooth and nice as can be. Brakes are exemplary. They'll stop. They'll lay you through the windshield if you don't have seat belts on. Uh, discs in the front, drums in the rear. They're huge drums. I don't even know how big they are. They look like they're 14 inch or something. They're huge. Um, I can't see a single, single, single thing underneath this car. Uh, the only uh, downfall of this entire vehicle would be that interior that needs to be freshened up. But for what you're going to buy this car, we're going to leave you about fifteen thousand dollars to do that, and you'll probably it'll probably cost you about three, four grand to do it right. But you'll have yourself a brand new fifty-five to sixty thousand dollar car when you're done. So it's available here at Hankster's, Daytona Beach, and this is a nice car.